Welcome everyone to our Riverside City College School of Business show. My name is Justin Hudson. And I'm Ajane Wilcoxon. One of our goals is to bring you entrepreneurs, academic instructors, classified professionals, and leaders within our community. Today we are really honored and privileged to be joined by Chie Ishihara. She is Assistant Professor of Business and, I have to add, I want to say not only business but world studies. Mm. I like that mm. here at Riverside City College. Mm. So welcome, Ms. Chie. So we got to jump into it. So we want to know, where are you from? All right, well, I was born in Japan, uh, Tokyo, Japan. And I was raised there, um, and I went to high school there. Wow. Actually, the school I went to was an international school, and it was one of those missionary schools. Our family was not necessarily religious in any certain faith, um, but it was one of those schools opened by missionaries, which was really fantastic mm -hmm. because um, it was really was real all global, oh. and that's where my awareness for global is started. Wow. Ever since we were young, we had classmates from all sorts of different background that I never knew. And as a kid, you really don't know anything about who's from where or hmm. what their name really means or what they originated from. You just play with friends that are nice and who are, don't play with friends who are not nice. <laughs> so that's. So I came with from a really, really global background without really knowing the importance or the lack of global awareness in the world. Wow. And then I finished high school there, and because it was a so-called accredited by U.S. accreditation school, the option to come to college was to come to the United States. So I went to a school in Massachusetts, um, in Worcester, Massachusetts, hmm. one year, and it really wasn't a fit for me. So I moved to West Coast. And oh. I went to a school called the Claremont, uh, in the Claremont College. Oh, Claremont Claremont College. A, Cla a school called, you mean the Claremont College? The Claremont College. Oh, yeah. okay. um, and I went to one of them called Pomona College, and yeah. that's where I finished. Wow. And then um, and I went into working. And well, then, back up, back oh, up. Yeah, yeah. What did you get your bachelor's degree in? Back then, I think anything that you were interested in, you could get a degree in. Okay. So I was interested in criminology. Oh. And I almost thought I would like to go into law, wow. but then I got tired of studying. So, um, and it was actually a sociology major that I declared myself in. And then as soon as I um, finished school, I went to work. Well, I could, wait, wait, I could see Chie with a gun on her hip, like CIA, FBI, mm. special assistant to the president. Mm. Yeah, mm. I like that. I, I could have because I really love James Bond series. Oh, oh wow. yeah. Okay. I would have never expected that from you. 007. I yes. like it. That was really yes. nice. So, can you say something to our audience in Japanese? Ohayou gozaimasu. Ishihara Chie to moshimasu. Yoroshiku onegai itashimasu. And what does that mean? Good morning. My name is Chie Ishihara. Um, Pleased to meet you. Wow. That's mm. pretty dark. You cool. know, one of my dreams is to go to Japan and just like immerse myself in that culture. So what's the best way I could, you know, do that? Just go. I <laughs> think I think we all have wherever places that you want to go in the future or you're thinking now or somewhere sometime in the future. I think sometimes the future should just happen now. Mm. Oh, the future should just happen, happen now. now. That's a great quote. What's the... What's That's the cool. reason of cool. stopping yourself, right? Because tomorrow may never come. Mm. So might as well do it today. Gee, that's a great quote. I hope y'all heard that. The future should happen now. Mm -hmm. That's wow. beautiful. And just get on the plane, especially if you could get to anywhere where it's off season in their country, then the cost of going is much lower. Mm. Um, and you don't have to have a, a luxurious uh, travel. When you go, you can go economy class. You can go into a cheaper hotel because you're going to be out and about anyway. You're just going Very to true. go to bed just to sleep. You're right. Very so true. it doesn't have to be a luxury hotel. Got a question. And then, can you talk about how our college students and even our community members can go with the study abroad? Oh. Yes. In fact, um, there was a very strong interest in Japan as one of the destinations to go for even among students, among community, among, it seems like the place everybody wants to go of all ages. Younger kids want to go because of the influence from anime. The older people want to go because of the video games. The adults want to go, even like senior adults want to go because of 
difference in culture and to them it's a little bit more of a mystery still and plus it's a destination where it's quite safe among all the Asian countries are perhaps one of the safest places you can go in the world right now. Wow. Um, everything is clean. If you could stay in the cities, the transportation system is very easy to get around. Uh, a lot of things are written in English. Um, on the average, people can understand questions in English and will answer to you in English. Um, not fluently, but they can get their point across. Mm. Wow. And then, uh, so Riverside. City College District had decided to do a study abroad. So next summer, in summer of 2024, there will be an opportunity for students, which it's actually, it's already decided now. By now, we have to decide early um, so we could get them prepped with passports and things like that. But there will be a six weeks study abroad, two weeks uh, studying intensively about global marketing, mm -hmm. and then four weeks actually doing an internship. So you go to get an opportunity wow. to work in Japan and do that resume booster. And how great is that? That's an opportunity fantastic. to have worked in a different country, wow. you know, in a safe environment, in a job that they will, we will set it up for. That's beautiful. Wow. The first time ever that we're doing this internship opportunity. Oh, I love it. So too. is that open to faculty members as well? The faculty, not, oh, well, I go because I teach. <laughs> But I guess in the future, perhaps you never know you for never other know. faculty. And then I think it's great precedent for RCC, uh, this RCCD to make to create an opportunity where students can do something beyond just studying. Wow. If they could do work experience there, and this could be, uh, you know, a foundation for all the other disciplines in the college. So we'll be the first one to go. The business, yay, business. We're always the the trendsetter right. and the leader of doing new things. That's right. So we'll make this happen and um, share the experiences with the rest of the college and then they could decide what they want to do with it later wow. on. That's so. beautiful. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. So you told us you got your, your bachelor's degree, you went to Claremont Colleges. Tell us what degree you earned there and why and then give us a career synopsis. Yes. So by the time I was a senior, and I thought, do I want to pursue law school or do I want to start earning money? Mm. And money was it. Mm. And I just got tired of studying. So, and I looked around and said, where do I go to find money and make money? And I thought, well, the center of money is banks because that's where they all have the money. Right. So I said, maybe I'll just go banking. Oh. And I was an international student then, so I had to put into practice what I studied. Mm. Um, but I guess they were lenient enough to say, there was this uh, visa status called um, OPT, and um, I don't know what that stands for now, but it used to be um, study, working, work study kind of experience. Yeah. You get to do a six months, two sessions of six months of putting into practice what you studied in college, even if you're a foreign student, as long as you're not taking any other uh, local student's job away. And so I applied for this bank that was a Japanese bank in downtown LA, mm -hmm. and then it requires speaking Japanese. So I wasn't taking anybody else's job, um, but utilizing my talents and mm -hmm. my degree. Mm -hmm. And my degree was not in business, but I guess sociology, studying consumers, etc. Somehow I made it happen. Of course you did. And then I went there, I worked there for six months, but it really wasn't my cup of tea. Mm. And I worked as a, um, a secretary, and a secretary is a very important job, but I wanted to be somebody that does the decision making. Mm -hmm. It's just, it wasn't me. So um, I wasn't a very good performer. Uh, and here's to, an, you know, to you um, an example of how you do not perform and therefore you do not get reinstated the next time. <laughs> that happens, right? So the, the performance best. review came uh -huh. and then they said, you know, you're not really doing too well. And I said, well, I'm sorry, I'm not doing too well, but that's okay because I don't really want to be here either. <laughs> so, but then we mutually left and never leave a work on bad terms. That's right. Mm -hmm. So I show respect for and thanking them for having me for six months. And I immediately had to find a job because my next six months was contingent on the, the visa extending oh. as long as I have a job. Oh. So I had to immediately look for something and the only job that was available, and I just went to a job hunting place. Somebody that could, you know, I said, any job that they need a Japanese speaker. So there was one such job hunting place in downtown LA. And they said, well, there's a company that's called so-and-so. 
And I said, what kind of company is that? And I was so unaware that I was the world's largest ad agency. Oh, oh. wow. And they had an office in LA. Wow. And I didn't know, know anything about advertising because that's not the area I was studying. And they said the only job they have available is a receptionist job, but it's very hard to get into advertising. Everybody starts from the bottom, mailroom, receptionist, anything it takes to get there, but just get your foot in the door. And I said, no, my um, parents didn't help me pay for the tuition to go to Claremont College, which is really expensive, mm -hmm. for me to be a receptionist. Now, I'm not gonna be a receptionist. And they said, no, just don't say anything, just get, her, get, get your job there first, right? Even as a receptionist. So I go in there and I happen to be interviewing with the president. Mm, happened to be. I happened to be. And I said, please hire me. I'm smart. I work really, really hard. And I promise you, you won't regret hiring me. But please don't hire me as a receptionist. Mm. Mm. And whatever I said, he liked my guts. And he hired me on the spot. Did wow. he really? Mm. But he said, well, uh, we still need a receptionist. Would you mind being a receptionist maybe in the mornings for the first month until we find a replacement? Wow. And I said, that's a deal as long as it's for the month. So, Ushie, can you give our students advice on what they should do when it comes to, you know, going after their career? Because it sounds like you were determined, you didn't give up, and you went in there and you knew exactly what you wanted. Yes. Um, job hunting is tough. And it's really, to me, I think job hunting is a numbers game. Mm. And don't just get, uh, don't get discouraged if you don't get the dream job on the first try, second try, fifth try. And my rule of thumb is try 20 jobs and maybe you'll get one. Wow. You know, same thing for any kind of entrepreneurial idea. You try, you have 20 different ideas and maybe one might stick. But you don't just try different jobs without being prepared. Mm -hmm. That's on you. That's right. So you have to anticipate at least 10 questions I used to anticipate 50 if it were the job that I really, really wanted. Wow. And what they would be, the potential questions they'll ask you. And I'll write all the answers to the questions. I'll sit on it, uh, illuminate it some more, next day, edit it. And I did that com so many times until I was perfectly happy with the question that I would be able to respond to the way I wanted to respond. And I would remember them. I would practice vocalizing it, not just knowing in your head, because actually speaking and hearing you speak is different from just knowing in your head what you think you'll say. Because yeah. you have to kind of hear yourself that's say right. it. So I would practice and practice and practice. And then that's one. But interview can only happen if your resume makes the cut. That's mm. right. And resume is just a piece of paper. And that has to represent you. That's right. Sure. So resume has to do the walking and talking and smiling and energizing and everything on your behalf. Mm -hmm. So the best resume writing is to get, you, you do the research on what careers you want and what jobs they want, you want. And the jobs usually have a job listing and description of what they're looking for. And you put everything down on there on your resume. That's right. So that's what you did? That's what I did. that opened the opportunity. So you Absolutely. were hired as a secretary for the first month? And then mm -hmm. what happened? Receptionist, actually, for Receptionist. the first month. Okay. So I really didn't like just answering the phone. Mm. But then in the afternoon, I was able to learn the job. Mm. And I worked. I put my head down, and I worked and worked and worked. And you know, when you're in a job environment, it's different from being in a school where people could be jealous of you, whatever the reason is. And then whatever their anxieties or insecurities are, and they'll try to get you down. And you just try not to let that bother you. And you keep your head down and just work, 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 work. Right. So I worked really hard there for seven years. Wow. wow. But then the first few years, um, I was getting so little paid. And I knew so many other people that came in later got paid much higher. In fact, there was one Stanford grad. Um, and because Stanford was such a name value, brand name, versus not many people know about Claremont Colleges, locally we do, mm -hmm. um, nationwide they do now, but back then nobody really knew Claremont Colleges because we didn't have a football team. Mm -hmm. And Stanford does, and Stanford's really renowned. So the person that came from Stanford did very little job and was getting paid a lot more than I was. Mm -hmm. But I didn't contest to the boss yet. I made sure that I could do really good job mm, okay. and then I went to the boss and I gave the facts of this is what I'm now able to do this and this and this and this and therefore you as a company will benefit this and this and this 
So could I please have a raise? Wow. Good for you. Again, yeah. you went in and demanded what you wanted. Correct. But I didn't demand just because I wanted it. I demanded it because now I'm able to offer that mm. based on facts. You were bringing additional, she was bringing additional mm -hmm. value to the company. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well you always well have to be valuable to the company or else why would they keep you? That's mm -hmm. right. You could be so replaceable any day. So can I just clarify? Mm -hmm. Had you completed your MBA yet? At that time, no. No. Wow. Mm -hmm. okay. I was still with my bachelor's degree. Okay. In fact, I didn't get my bachelor's degree, uh, master's degree until much, much later. Okay. And by the time I was at that first company for seven years, and then I had an opportunity to, to move to Japan. Oh. And because I worked so hard and kept my, kept my, uh, you know, my politics to very minimum, and there was a senior consultant working in the company who really took a liking to me and my work ethic. Hmm. So when I confided in him, I have to go to Japan for a year because of my family reasons. They said, do you need a job there? I said, I do. Oh. And they said, I'll get your job. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. So that was, that's networking. That is networking. But networking worked only because I was doing a really good job. And then the networking meant the day I showed up to work, I already had a job. I didn't have to interview. It was a job was already mine. Oh, wow. And then this job was an event planning job. So the first job, I, as soon as I show up to work, in they Japan. said, in Japan, first job was, okay, you get on the plane tomorrow, you're going to England because we're taking sumo wrestlers to England for an exhibition match. Wow. And I'm like, I'm Japanese, but I know nothing about sumo. Mm. So on the plane, I had to study sumo for dummies. And then I knew all it. I had to learn all the terminology. I knew nothing about sumo. Did you get to meet some of the sumo wrestlers? Absolutely. So you're a little thing Absol here, these oh, big yeah, guys. Absolutely. And you know, and I was worried about like, would I be able to do a good enough job? And my job was kind of end up easy, being easy. This really, really famous ex sumo who now was like so called the the he had his own team. Was it? Uh, he was called Wolf. Oh, wolf. Okay. Yeah, but, I, but he was really, really famous. He's, he's no longer here, but then he oh, was a okay. very, very famous person. Very nice guy. Oh. And all I had to do was, he was calling the shots, and in this place called Royal Albert Hall, which is one of the very, very beautiful um, places in England, mm. in London, um, and they had um, the bout there. And he made the announcement of what the, 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 the I don't know what you call those, not the tricks, but then the special the way they win the battle, right? The terminologies, mm -hmm. and I didn't know any of that, but he will call it out. Oh. And all I had to do was translate into English, but the person who was the announcer at Royal Albert's Hall was an avid sumo fan. Oh. So he already knew what to say, so I was just sitting there really not having much to do. <laughs> but the, the funny thing was I thought they were all calling me for English questions, and the questions came from hotels. Do we need to reinforce the toilets? Oh. <laughs> Do we need to bet, make the bed more secure? The sumo wrestlers, as you know, are really quite big. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And, um, and the, also the funny thing was in the airplane, the big shots, the sumo wrestlers who were more established, will get the first class seat, maybe business class seat. But the peons who sit in the economy said, oh, we, had, hey, we were in a really good seat because they could take several seats up. They could take those four seats, put all the, the sides of the, the armrest up. Oh. And then they had much, much bigger space yeah. than the limited space even for first class. Yeah. Oh, so that gosh. was really interesting. Wow. And then wow. when I was and the next job was from the same company, they said, now you go to Hawaii because we were putting together this like a marathon event for high schoolers. There was an invite for a different country high school for track meet. Hmm. And they were all gonna meet in Hawaii in one day compete. Oh. And then so we um, called on countries all over the world, and some countries needed help with um, getting the gear. Mm -hmm. They didn't have enough money for shoes, wearing shoes. Wow. So we supplied that, and some you, countries you did. Those? Our company did. But this was, this was all sponsored, because it was so-called marketing. So it was event sponsorship, where companies said, we would want to do something beneficial for the society. We would want to have their names known. Um, can you find a good event that would do that and there was a good fit so it was a kind of a png equivalent company of, out of japan wow. um it wasn't png but okay. it was equivalent like a household goods company mm -hmm. 
So they sponsored and we did that. So it sounds like you have a very well diverse background mm -hmm. when it comes to marketing mm -hmm. and in the business realm. So how did you end up here at RCC? That's a good question. So after that, and then after working for DirecTV, oh. uh, and I worked that, and I went back and forth in Japan and said DirecTV up. One of the teams. Said DirecTV Are you up. serious? And then after that came a time, and then I did another company in Pasadena. I had many, many years of industry experience. There was a time when I came and said, I need to slow down my life. Yeah. Mm. And that's when I had my family already. Mm. So that's when I went back to oh, for my MBA. Okay. And this, one, this time I went to Cal Poly Pomona. Mm. Um, and I chose that school only because that was the last, the only school that was open when I decided to go back to masters. So I want to go to masters now. Ooh, it's already June. Which, com <laughs> which com uh, school is still open for enrollment? Cal Poly. Okay, that's where I'm going. <laughs> awesome. So, um, and I haven't studied math in so long, so I did the quick review study. And I said, there's not much more I can do with English, so I'll just take the test, and I guess I got good enough score Beautiful. that I got in. And then I wanted to give back. Mm. I think it was time for me, because I really benefited in the industry by people who helped me. Mm -hmm. The mentors that I met, the people who were good examples, whether I was seeking them out for mentors or not, um, I have a mindset that I can learn from everybody. Wow. So whether it was a bad person or a good person or a mediocre person or whatever, I learned something from somebody. That's right. And I said, if I could have this provided to um, students, it's my turn. Mm -hmm. And where can I do that? School. So that's where I got into college, um, back into getting my master's degree, and I wanted to teach at a college. Wow. wow. That's awesome. And now how long have you been here at RCC? Um, I think it might be my 18th year. Not to age myself, but I have aged me. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're all good, my friend. Yes, but we are experienced. We have business department. Don't we have experienced faculty? Oh, I think we have, between the four of us, we have over 90 years of experience. Absolutely, um, not just the teaching ex academic experience, no, no, no. but industry, industry. experience. and. Um, we are always are very conscious about bringing our industry knowledge to our students in the classroom. That's right. That way we can have students apply it immediately. Absolutely. Mm. That's wow. good. Okay, so who or what inspired you? Um, I don't think I can attribute it to any single incident, but one person that I really looked up to was in one of the one of the ad agency this was when i was stationed in japan mm -hmm. i was perhaps 29 and he was only 30. Yeah. and he came from north carolina really and he until he moved to new york for an ad agency he has not seen anybody that was not the same skin color as he was mm -hmm. oh. and then he his eyes popped open when he went to new york and he said, oh, there's so many different kinds of people. I want to try something. And he, of all the places, he went to Japan. Mm. And then he was one of those persons I learned a lot from because he was always solution-minded. Mm. Uh, in advertising, we have so many struggles. I mean, we had thought we have a brilliant idea and we propose to the client and we get denied. Mm. Um, but he was not the kind that goes, why didn't the client like it? He was more of, okay, what do we do next? very solution oriented mm. and i really learned from him and i said that's the kind of mindset i want to cons constantly have and he was somebody that i really aspired to be like and oh, he was beautiful. only 30. that's wow. beautiful mm -hmm. that's beautiful okay so how do you maintain your mental health and strength with the busyness of being a college educator mm. that's a tough one and i think it's true for everybody and i think it's just true not for educators but for students mm -hmm. for staff mm -hmm. for community members and definitely for faculty yeah. um, we have so many roles that we play and mm. the responsibility that pool is everywhere yeah. like the some of the dichotomy that i'm in is yes i'm a faculty but i'm also a student i'm always constantly learning about what can i bring into classroom That's what's right. going on in the world what can I share about the marketing techniques that worked in one country, then that worked, didn't work on the other, or how they changed it up, and then it worked. I'm constantly learning. Yeah. So that's going on. Um, I'm a mother, but I'm also a daughter to my mother. Oh. And now I'm kind of a 
guider to a mother who used to be like I, the, who I used to be a daughter of. Mm -hmm. So there's a role reversal. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm in Tokyo, you know, two times a year, okay. winter and summer. And the busy, busy, busy metropolis, um, everything going on. And um, Japan is one country where you get information about other countries all the time. Mm -hmm. And then I come back to Riverside, and we're a little bit in a cocoon here. Mm -hmm. That we do are not necessarily aware of what's going on, let alone you know mm -hmm. our neighboring countries. Right. Um, and that dichotomy kind of throws me off sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I need to get recentered, back mm -hmm. to being centered. So what I do is I go back to the roots, and literally to the roots, meaning to touching the roots to the ground to the flowers. And oh. I like gardening, and I think gardening really humbles you. That was a nice mm -hmm. segue into that. That was nice. And gardening, like, look, I just like to see the flowers grow. Um, look, look at roses, for example. How much joy rose brings to everybody all over the world. And there's rose yeah. everywhere, right? Yeah. If you only know what nutrition it needs, what pH balance it takes, how much water it needs, how much sun it needs, yeah. you can grow rose everywhere in the world. Yeah. And as long as you understand. So all over the world, their cultures, they understand the rose that's habitating in their own land. And in return, rose doesn't discriminate, right? Yeah. Rose just constantly gives you joy. Yeah. And the rose comes in different colors, shapes, species, fragrance. And if you go to rose garden in any parts of the world, there are different roses coexisting yeah. only to give Sure. If it's understood. That's beautiful. Wow. That That's needs beautiful. to be a poem or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was That's nice. Thank you. Nice. So our students are always curious. What is a book that you would highly recommend that they read? Mm, I have it right here to share with you. Please do. <laughs> and share with you. Please do. So I have this book called Watership Down. And this was a book written by Fowler to their kids. And Fowler used to make up stories along the way every time they go on a road trip. Oh. But the, the, the story was so good, the kids started to say, Dad, you should make this into a book. And it be, actually became a book. Oh. And this is a book that I read um, as a young adult, perhaps right out of college. And it's, as you can see, it's a fairly good thickness size book. And I think they're like, what, 600 pages? All about 500 pages. Mm. And this is the book that as soon as I finished reading the last, it's a page turner. And as soon as I turned the last page, I went back and immediately reread it. It was that good. And on the surface, it's about um, rabbits. It's about rabbits being pushed away from their own area of habitation, and they just have to cross the prairie to go to a different place and create their own burrow. So it's a really simple story, but it's a personification of friendship, loyalty, um, and to me, it was about management. Mm. And not management in a sense of who's going to boss whom, but a management of understanding people so hmm. you can safely, everybody all as a team, cross the danger and create a new bureau Love it. for wow. themselves. It's a very highly <laughs> recommended book. Amazing. Very easy read. Nice. Amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. So now, Mashie, mm -hmm. what is one song that you would pick that would best describe you that is like the theme song to your life and why? Um, it's an old song. It was part of a movie song too, but it's called Wind Un Underneath My Wings. Oh, yeah. By Bette Midler. Bette Midler. Okay. And don't How ask me go? to sing it. Okay. Ah, I'm gonna stop <laughs> you. Don't ask me to sing it. I have zero music in me. But the song, it's a beautiful song. Um, talks about um, a, fr a good friendship mm -hmm. and because of that friend always rooting for you and supporting you you're mm -hmm. able to soar mm -hmm. um, but I think That's awesome. I think we all take turns in life there are times in our life when we're the one that's soaring and we should appreciate the people who are helping us soar but there are other times I think we become the wind and help somebody yeah. soar and I think it's that taking turns that makes our life really a lot more meaningful. That's nice. That's really nice. 
Okay, what is one song that is your favorite? What's your favorite song right now? Okay, I have to do a plug in. Uh oh. It's a song that my son makes. Oh, that's a serious plug. Oh. It's a really serious plug. Love it. Um, if you didn't say that, he'll be mad. And then, oh, he didn't ask me to. Because oh. he's pretty, he's pretty, he's not the type that goes go, you know, promote me or anything like that. But he's an e-commerce guy in trade, in his profession, but he's also uh, makes music. He um, sings, he composes, um, and he creates the lyrics. And it's called Hello Lonely, and that's the first music video that he created. But he has created many since. And what's your son's name? Uh, his, his name's Sean, but then his music uh, label is Ishihara Music. And he just wanted to take his um, mother's, I guess, maiden name um, to get to the roots of Japan. So maybe you can send me a link, and maybe we can include that. Mm -hmm. Wow. I definitely cool. will. Okay. I think you'll like it. That's wonderful. Wow. That's wonderful. Now, what is one word that would best describe you and why? Best describe me? I hope to be the encourager. The practical encourager. Well, like Not that. the encourager that just butters you up, but encourager that um, helps you look at the reality of what's really available for you and the opportunity that you may not be seeing for yourself, but then I could hopefully be the eyes that make you or help you see that so you could go for what you really want to go for. Wow. Steve. That's good. Steve. That's good shit. That's Steve. So what is a thought or idea you'd like to share with our Riverside City College students today? I am also always global minded, just by nature of how I grew up being in that international school to the nature of things that I teach. But it's just my mindset and my lifestyle, very global. And I would like you to challenge yourself to once in your lifetime and sooner more than later to get out of your comfort zone, pick a country and just go. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Pick a country and go. And just go. And, and why? Stops why, why, you. Do you, why do you give that as a thought that you want to share with your students? I think if you see, um, what you see in different countries is just different perspective. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the things that you thought were bothering you, bothering you in your daily life, it might make it, it might may help you make it look at it from a different perspective. Absolutely, Chia. And what's important to you, you think right now, what's bothering you actually yes. m might not be, right? And if you think about it, those satellites and rockets that go on the moon, when they look at the Earth by the time because of the light year change. Right? The, t the time it takes for the light to travel. By the time the people, astronauts, are looking at the Earth, the, your problems has already been long gone. Long gone. And there's always a solution. Mm. There's always a solution. It's how you look at it. Mm. That's right. And then have that perspective by, I think it's easier if you go to different countries and experience that to get a kick into having that perspective. Yeah. Wow. And do you feel that traveling changes you? I think so, because then you become not all about yourself. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. That's why I love traveling. Yeah. That's wow. beautiful. Well, I need to go to Japan. That's definitely Absolutely. on my bucket list. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. thank you for sharing that. Of course. Yeah, thank you sure, for, you're welcome. Thank you for being here with us today. Yeah. Well, thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And yeah. thank you all for watching, and we look forward to, to seeing, seeing you, you next week. Take Say care.